just a few years, the modern stunt kite has evolved from a simple form to the intricate tools you're about to watch. These, with practice, can help you to become the ultimate, the freestyle pilot. At PRISM, we design and build more than just kites. From the simple joy of the beginner to the extreme in choreography, it's all about fun and a challenge guaranteed to put that smile on your face. In the following film, we've put together a series of comprehensive learning tools, taking you through the steps, starting with the basics. With the stall as a foundation and advancing to the more intricate combinations, this film can be your learning tool. We encourage you to be the inventor, to develop new tricks and combinations of your own. We'd like you to think of this as a beginning. The stall is the most important skill to master once you've got the basics of launching, steering, and landing your kite. If you take time to really master the stall-related moves first, you'll be amazed at how much easier the advanced tricks are to learn. Every hour spent practicing stalls saves you several hours down the road when you want to learn more advanced tricks. Stalling your kite means disrupting the air over the wing enough that the kite hovers in one place rather than flying forwards. A stall can be controlled so it sinks downwards or slides horizontally sideways as well. You may not realize it, but a simple landing on both wing tips at the edge of the wind window is a basic stall. Learning to initiate and control a stall is the first key skill for trick flying because many tricks start or end in a stalled position. Also, getting comfortable with the kite not flying is the first step towards mastering all the other tricks where the kite is carefully balanced and floating on the wind. To hold a stall in balance, you must become aware of the fine differences in tension on your lines, a sensitivity you'll need for many advanced maneuvers later on. To land a kite on its wingtips in launch position, you first have to stall it. During that brief moment when the kite is sinking backwards, the kite is actually stalled, it's not flying forwards. Practice flying your kite out to the edge of the window, turning it upwards, then landing on both wingtips. Now build on this by practicing your landings from higher and higher above the ground. Fly to the edge, turn the kite upwards, and let it settle backwards into a landing on both wingtips. As the kite settles backwards, gently correct your line tension to keep it pointed up with as little wobble as possible. Anticipate which direction you'll need to correct, with the goal of making both wingtips touch the ground at the same time. Keeping your fingertips against the line really helps as you make the subtle changes in line tension you need to keep the kite balanced. Each time you make a clean landing, try one from a little higher up the edge of the wind window. Eventually, you should be able to back the kite down all the way from the top of the window with no wobbles. The side slide is a great example of a perfectly controlled stall. Many people don't bother practicing it because they're eager to move on to axles and more glamorous moves, but truly mastering the side slide will give you the sensitivity you need to learn everything else much more quickly. To do a side slide, use a downward turn at the edge to generate sideways momentum and slide the kite sideways in a stall, holding it perfectly horizontal at a constant altitude. Slide the kite all the way across the window without a bobble. Fly to the edge of the window and make a sharp downwards turn. Release the turn a little early so the kite stops at level and starts to slide in towards the middle of the wind window. As it slides, control the tension on the lines and the angle of the kite so it moves sideways at a constant altitude and without a wobble. Use fingertips on the line to feel subtle changes in tension. Move forwards and back with your feet to control altitude and be ready to move forwards if the kite starts to fly away. Do the slide just a few feet at a time at first, only as far as you can keep the wings level. Anticipate the release of the downwards turn so the kite comes out horizontal. Once you've mastered this, try changing direction while maintaining the stall. First float right, then stop, and float left. With practice and a little stamina, you can even hold a horizontal slide around a full 360 in the lightest winds. On a flat, calm day, start a side slide with a downwards turn and start running backwards to keep your altitude as you slide. When you get to the edge of the window, just keep running backwards while you guide the slide in the same direction in a full 360 around yourself. Start on super short lines. 20 feet is easiest. On a day when there's truly no wind, think about taking long, smooth steps as you move backwards. If you need to go backwards faster, 
try to take longer steps, not faster ones. Once you've mastered the basic stall, the snap stall will be one of the most dramatic moves in your collection. It's great for punctuating a ballet routine or for adding an aggressive, fast-paced side to your flying style. From a screaming pass at any angle, you can stop the kite in a split second as if it has just been stapled to the sky. The snap stall is basically a very quick, sharp tug on one wing, followed immediately by a sharper, stronger one on the other. It's a lot like an exaggerated punch turn. From a horizontal pass, hit the top wing and the bottom in quick succession. Then give immediate slack to hold the stall. If there's any wind at all, be ready to run towards the kite to keep it stalled once you shake the wind off the sail. The key is to snap your wrists quickly enough and then give the kite enough slack immediately to hold the stall. The motion is a lot like an exaggerated punch turn. If you need to give slack in a hurry, your arms and wrists can move faster than your whole body. Keep your wrists and arms cocked before you snap so you can throw a few feet of slack at the kite instantly. Snap stalls are easiest to practice in light winds first because you don't have to run down wind to hold the stall. Later on, you can speed up your timing to pull it off in stronger winds. When you're practicing, start from a horizontal pass, then work up to the vertical and beyond vertical path always ending up with the kite stalled in a nose-up position. With the same motion as the snap stall, you can turn a snap stall into a tip stab landing that really grabs attention. Be sure you have a few extra spars around when you practice though, because driving your wing tip into the ground as hard as you can could break a rod if the timing's not just perfect. Before you work on the tip stab, know how to hold the kite in a stall and slide it sideways. Master the snap stall so you can really stick the kite to the sky, even in strong winds. For a tip stab, use a snap stall motion to turn the kite into a tip stand orientation. Use the same snaps of the wrist you would for a snap stall. As you do this, let the upper wing back so that the kite slides dramatically downwards onto its wing tip. The key is to give lots of slack with the top hand after jamming on the bottom wing. You also need to use sharp enough wrist motion to kill all the lift in the sail. To practice, start from a horizontal pass and work up to a more and more vertical trajectory. Practice in the air and pretend the horizon is the ground level. This way you can work on your timing without hitting the ground. Stay ahead of the kite and watch the ground, not the kite, to improve your timing. Cock hands and wrists in close to the body for maximum release of line immediately after the stall. Note the ending body position. Sooner or later your kite is going to return to earth, and the more you push the envelope learning new tricks, the more time you can expect to spend with your kite in a tangle on the ground. To avoid repeating the walk of shame, learn the basic ground recoveries before you dig into the more advanced tricks. Make yourself a set of 20-foot flying lines out of an old broken line set. Spend an hour or two practicing all varieties of launches on these super short lines and you'll be amazed at how easily you pick it up. The exercise works by bringing you so close to the kite that you can see exactly how the lines are tangled around it and exactly how the kite is oriented to the wind. When you move back to longer lines, you'll be able to visualize exactly what's going on even though it may be too far away to see. Anytime your kite is towards the middle of the wind window on its nose, the cartwheel is a pretty reliable way to recover once you get the motions figured out. Just be a little careful not to overdo the yank on the lines or to try to launch afterwards without noticing a snagged wing tip as that can break a leading edge in a hurry. With the kite nose down and resting on one leading edge, tip the kite back about halfway. Now pull on the wing in the air and release the one on the ground to roll the kite across the other leading edge and into launch position. The kite won't be square to you after the cartwheel, so now give a few tugs on the back wing to pull it even and square it up for launch. How much you tip the kite back before you pull is key. If the spine is too vertical, then the kite won't roll over. If it's tipped too far back, then the wing will scoop air under it and you'll have a tangle. Practice by rolling the kite back and forwards on its nose from one wing to the other. 
Then use a slightly more aggressive pull and roll the kite all the way over. It's easiest to practice the cartwheel first on 20 foot lines. While you're at it, watch how your lines are snagged around the kite and learn how to untangle a tip wrap with a few tugs on the line. Always cartwheel in towards the middle of the window so that the wind helps to roll the kite over. If you end up just dragging the kite sideways towards you on its back, try giving less slack with the other hand as you pull. Also, try doing the cartwheel closer to the center of the wind window so you can get more help from the wind in rolling it over. The leading edge launch is the best way to handle a crash near the edge of the window. To do it, roll the kite onto whichever leading edge gets the nose pointed away from the center of the wind window. Then gently pull on the upper wing until it's just about to fall towards you. Just before it falls, add tension to the lower wing and pull on both to get the kite sliding on its leading edge towards the side of the window. As it gains speed, move backwards and pull more on the upper wing to scoop air under the kite and steer it into the air. The key in this one is making sure you get the kite moving away from the center of the window, not towards it. It can be almost impossible to do a leading edge launch towards the center of the window. To get the kite started sliding, your goal is to have the upper wing falling towards you and the lower wing tip as far back as possible. This recovery is great anytime the kite is directly downwind of you, and once you get it, you'll find it's the easiest relaunch in most wind conditions. The only drawback is that if you get it wrong, you fall into the dreaded belly down, nose towards you position and you might have to endure the walk of shame. Starting with the kite on its back with the nose towards you, pull one wing to rotate the kite on its back 180 degrees, then tug the other line to scoop air under the nose into launch position. Be ready to pull the opposite line as the nose comes around so that it doesn't fall down nose towards you. The dead launch is the only recovery from the belly down, nose towards you position. It takes two tugs in quick succession, one to bounce the nose a few inches into the air, and then a second to scoop air under the nose into launch position. It works with most prism kite designs and is easiest on short grass or hard packed sand. Start with slack lines and give a good sharp tug with the wrists. You'll see the nose bounce a few inches into the air. A split second later, give a gentle tug to scoop air under the kite into launch position. If your initial tug drags the kite more than a few inches along the ground, you're pulling too much line and need to make your first tug faster and sharper. You want to make your second tug when the nose reaches the highest point in the bounce, so keep your eyes open and be ready. Try the dead launch on a firm surface like hard packed sand or short grass at first so you can see the effects of what you're doing. Be sure to make your first tug as short and sharp as possible. The pop-up launch is handy in light winds or indoors when the kite is resting on the ground with belly down and nose pointed away from you. With the kite on the ground belly down and nose away from you, a short sharp tug on both lines will cause the kite to pop up and backwards a few feet into the air. Take up the slack and then use a gentle pull on one line to pull the nose around 180 degrees and into flying position. The key is the very quick sharp tug that only pulls an inch of line. Start with slack lines, use quick wrists, and the instant the lines come taut, your tug should be done. Just after the tug, be ready to take up slack with a quick move backwards as the kite backs up towards you. Sooner or later you're going to find days when there just doesn't seem to be enough wind to fly. With a little bit of practice and some knowledge about setting up your kite, you can learn to fly any kite in very light winds. We don't consider light wind flying a trick, but it is a skill that will help you immensely in all areas of your flying. Flying advanced tricks is all about being sensitive to tiny changes in line tension and kite position. Develop the subtle touch you need to keep your kite up in the lightest breeze and everything will come easier to you afterwards. You'll also find that most tricks are easier in light winds because the kite moves more slowly and you don't have to sprint down wind to hold a stall. 
You don't need an ultralight kite to learn the basics of low wind flying. As a matter of fact, learning to make a heavier kite fly anyway will teach you more quickly. Make a point of going out to practice on a couple of days when you wouldn't normally even try to fly and learn how to make your kite fly. Remember, in light wind, the kite won't fly by itself, but you can make it look like it does. Most freestyle pilots prefer light winds once they get the hang of it because you can do a much wider range of tricks with less effort. Our favorite wind speed is just enough to let the kite float in a stall without running forwards. If you're having consistent trouble with certain tricks, try practicing them in lighter winds. A lot of people don't realize how hard it is to pull off a lot of moves when it's blowing harder than 10 or 12 miles an hour. The setup of your kite and your choice of lines makes a big difference in light winds. We set our kites at the factory for best performance in moderate winds, 8 or 10 miles an hour. But with a quick adjustment to the bridle and the standoffs, if yours are adjustable, you can coax a lot more lift out of your kite on those calm days. Your choice of lines makes a big difference too. Use a lighter, shorter line set such as 50 feet of 50 pound spectra, and you'll be amazed at how much less work it takes to keep the kite in the air. Here are some tuning tips for maximum lift and light winds. Use light, short lines to minimize drag. 50 feet of 50 pound spectra is great for many average size kites. Move the toe points on your bridle toward the nose so that the kite is tipped more nose towards you. If you have adjustable standoffs, move them inwards towards the spine for maximum lift. If your kite has two standoffs per wing, slide the outer ones in an inch or two to reduce drag on your wing tips. The downwind glide is your chance to move forward and make up lost ground before you run out of space on the field. Anytime you give the kite slack as it flies downward, the nose will flare out and the kite will start to glide away from you like an airplane coming in to land. But be careful. If you give the kite too much slack, the nose will flare beyond horizontal and the kite will stall and fall out of the sky. The key is to keep just enough tension on the lines and you can control this by how fast you move forward downwind. With the kite flying downward from the top of the window, start walking or running forward so that the nose flares up into an almost horizontal attitude and the kite glides downwind with minimal loss of altitude. The kite will look like a plane coming in for a landing as it glides away from you. Control the speed of descent by how fast you move forwards. The key to the glide is the speed at which you move forward. Too fast and the nose will flare too high and stall. Too slow and the kite will dive toward the ground before you make any progress downwind. Control the angle of the glide by how fast you move forward downwind. Keep both hands together and touching so you keep the kite flying in a nice straight line. In the very lightest winds, you can impress your friends and get some exercise by flying the kite horizontally in a full circle around yourself. Fly the kite horizontally across the full wind window and then continue beyond the edge in a full circle around yourself by walking or running backwards. If your running speed is enough faster than the wind speed, you can keep the kite flying even while it's upwind of you. As you get to the upwind side of the window, be ready to run backwards faster to compensate for the wind. Keep your arms extended in front of you in case you need to pull on the lines quickly to hold altitude. Think of your arms as emergency reserve. Give them a pump if nothing else will keep you flying. If you have to pull in on your arms, run backwards faster right away to get those arms extended out in front again. is a graceful move that requires a feather light touch and real sensitivity to the tension on your lines. It's essentially a flat, slow motion axle at the top of the window that keeps going around and around. Your lines will be mostly slack, but you may need to gently tend them as the kite rotates to keep the kite level and the lines clear of the wingtips. To do it, fly the kite to the top of the wind window, start a tight turn away from you and let it continue around into a series of axle-like rotations with the kite as flat on its belly as possible. If the first turn is just right, the kite will find its groove and you can let the lines go completely slack as the kite pirouettes all the way to the ground. 
More often, you'll need to ease the lines out each time the nose turns away to keep the rotation flat. The up and over is a key maneuver for indoor pilots, but it works outdoors too as long as you have zero wind and short enough lines. For an up and over, fly the kite up over your head, then turn your body around and use a big downwards pump to keep flying over the top and down the other side in a downwind glide. This move only works when the wind is light enough that you can easily fly 360s around yourself. The backflip is one of the first tricks we teach because it's easy to learn for anybody who can keep a kite in the air. Most modern kites can do it, but some older designs can be difficult or impossible to recover from a backflip. In very light winds it can be tricky because the kite needs some wind blowing past it to recover, but in normal winds it's an easy way to put your kite in a new and unusual position. To do a backflip, start at the top of the window with your arms fully outstretched then give a big downward sweep of the hands toward your knees. Cock your wrists to give a quick downward snap before throwing your hands upward. Recover by first giving the kite some slack, then taking it up again as the kite comes into flying position. If the kite doesn't flip all the way over, throw your hands up faster, start with your hands lower, or use a sharper snap of the wrist before you throw upward. Once the kite is on its back, keep light tension on the lines. You may need to move forward or backward to keep the tension on the lines. See how level and controlled you can keep the kite on its back by tending the slack in one line or the other. If you can do a basic backflip, the Lazy Susan is the next move to learn. From a regular backflip, pull on one line to initiate one or more 360 degree flat spins while the kite's on its back. Before you pull to spin, make sure the nose is tipped all the way back in the backflip so that you can see the line draped against the back edge of the kite at the standoff. The farther back the nose sits in the backflip, the easier it is to get it to spin. If you're having trouble, try giving the kite more slack as you backflip. This will cause the nose to lay farther back and help your lazy Susan. Also, make sure that your tug is a gentle pull followed by lots of slack rather than an aggressive yank. The flapjack is just a backflip and a lazy Susan that starts from the ground, but it requires perfect timing and just the right touch. Pull the kite up till the spine is vertical in launch position, and then keep pulling gently until it's about to fall over towards you into a nose down position. Just before it falls, give the tug of the wrists and then slack to launch the kite right into a backflip. Right after the backflip, tug one line for the lazy Susan and then recover from the backflip into a landing. For a good flapjack, you'll need wind that's light enough to let the nose start to fall towards you before the backflip. This makes it easiest to get it into a deep enough backflip for the Lazy Susan. Be careful when you pull for the Lazy Susan, as this move can break a lower spreader if you pull too hard. Like so many tricks, the key is to be gentle but firm at just the right moment. The yo-yo uses an exaggerated backflip with extra slack to roll the flying lines one or more times around the kite. If you get it just right, you can steer the kite around even with the lines rolled around it and then recover with a dramatic unrolling motion. The yo-yo works best with high aspect wing designs such as Elixir and E2. For your first yo-yo, do an exaggerated backflip by giving the kite lots of extra slack at the top of the wind window. Let the nose keep going backwards all the way around into flying position again, now with the lines wrapped all the way around the kite. From here, you can steer the kite around normally until you recover by unrolling. You can even backflip into additional yo-yos, though keeping the lines from snagging on the kite can be quite a challenge. Once you've mastered the yo-yo, try using it as a lead-in for other tricks, such as the fade and the backspin. Axle is probably the best known of all the freestyle tricks, and it's the basis for more variations than any other move. The axle is the gateway to freestyle flying 
and there are a huge number of tricks that are based on this move. It seems like everybody wants to learn the axle the moment they can keep a kite in the air, but this is usually a big mistake. The key to the axle is to first learn to control the kite in a stall. If you've mastered the stall and can float the kite across the window in a perfect side slide, you'll probably find that you can learn a consistent axle in just one afternoon. To do the axle, get into a horizontal stalled position and then tug on one wing to make the nose turn away from you as the kite makes a flat 360 degree rotation on its belly. As the nose goes around, give extra slack to both lines so that the line tension doesn't stop the axle early. If there's any wind at all, you'll almost certainly need to move forwards as the kite rotates around. The key to the axle is recognizing the right moment to tug. As the kite starts to settle backwards in a stall, learn to identify that moment when one wing starts to drop just a little more than the other. To help the kite go all the way around, give the kite plenty of slack with both hands right after the tug. Try to start and finish your axles with the wings level and the nose pointed up. For a spin axle, spin the kite tightly and give a tug on one wing as it swings up through the 9 o'clock position. Here's a great way to get the kite down on the ground in the middle of the window, especially once the wind comes up. The axle landing is an axle from a stall that ends up in a landing on both wing tips. Stall the kite about one wingspan above the ground and let it start to settle backwards. As the kite sinks backwards, let one wing start to drop. When the kite is pointed almost sideways, tug the top wing to axle downwards and land the kite on both wing tips. The double axle is easiest in moderate wind at the edge of the wind window, and some kites do it more easily than others because of their wing shape. In the prism line, the Elixir, E2, Alien, and Fanatic are best for double axles. The double axle is a basic axle that goes around twice on its own momentum before recovery into flying position. This is one of the few tricks that can be easier in moderate to strong winds. To do it, fly to the edge of the window with the kite pointed sideways and slightly upwards. Just before you reach the edge, pull tension on the top wing, then immediately axle the bottom wing. Now give lots of slack to let the kite rotate and clear the lines with its wing tips. Key to the double axle is the exact position of the low wing before you pull. Experiment with slight variations until you find the right position for your kite. The basic coin toss is an axle from a tip stand started by tugging the wing that's in the air. The kite should hop into the air as it axles and then land in a tip stand on the opposite wing. Start in a tip stand with the leading edge just about vertical. Keeping the lower wing vertical, pull the upper wing towards you as far as it'll go and then give it a tug to axle the kite into the air. Use the lower line to pull the kite towards you before axling with the upper line. As you work on the coin toss, try leaning the kite at slightly different angles until you find a position that works for you. Eventually, you'll do the coin toss entirely by feel, but at first it helps to have a clear snapshot of the exact position of the kite before you tuck. The reverse coin toss is a more difficult version of the axle from a tip stand. Rather than pulling on the wing that's in the air, you axle the wing tip that's on the ground to make a flatter rotation through the axle. Start the reverse coin toss in a low tip stand with the upper wing not far off the ground. The lower the wing is for your starting position, the easier it will be as you learn. Now pull tension on the wing in the air immediately before axling the wing on the ground. Give the kite lots of slack and let it rotate all the way around until it lands back on the same wing tip. The ground toss is the toughest of the three coin tosses because it starts with both wing tips on the ground. Like the reverse coin, the key to this one is a quick pre-tug on the opposite wing to pop the kite just an inch or two off the ground in the split second before you axle it. This first tug should happen so quickly that nobody even sees it happen. Try to land back on both wing tips after the axle is complete.
probably already done a half axle or something close to it while learning the basic axle. It's really just an axle that isn't allowed to rotate all the way around. For a normal axle with a nice full rotation, you've learned to give the kite lots of slack as it goes around. For a half axle, you basically just axle without giving enough slack. That will pull the kite out of the axle before it's pointed upwards again. Use it for a dramatic change of direction in a horizontal pass, or alternate in opposite directions for a cascade. To learn the half axle, start with a pass toward the edge of the window. As you approach the edge, but before you lose power in the sail, briefly pull tension on the lower wing before you sharply axle the top wing. Move back and take up slack as the kite reverses direction, then keep both lines even to accelerate out going the other way. The cascade is just a series of alternating half axles in quick succession. Each half axle is choked off by pulling the opposite line you used to initiate it. Depending on how quickly you choke off each half axle, you can make your cascade rise upwards, sink down, or stay in one place. For a basic cascade, start with the kite pointed sideways in the middle of the window. First axle the upper wing, then pull out of the axle with the other hand before it's complete. Now use that same hand to axle the upper wing the other way and pull out with the other hand. Alternate the sequence to keep the kite cascading back and forth. In light winds, you'll need to move backward to maintain a cascade, but in stronger wind, you'll need to run forwards to keep the kite from flying away. To do a 540, start in a vertical dive and throw slack into the lines to let the nose flare away until the spine is horizontal. Then tug one line to start a one and a half turn spin and recover with the nose pointed up. The key to the 540 is your body position before the flare. You need to be ready to give the kite a lot of slack in a hurry to avoid snagging your wingtips. Cock your body as the kite flies down by leaning back with arms all the way behind you and get ready to take a big step forwards. It can also help to do your first 540s from a dive that's not quite straight down. If you turn the kite sideways before you flare, it's easier to start the spin without snagging your wingtips. Later on, your timing will be better and you can work on the 540 from a dead vertical dive. Along with the stall, the axle, and the backflip, the fade is one of the most valuable freestyle moves to master because it's a key element in so many of the more advanced combinations. The best way to learn the fade is to practice maintaining a fade first. Start in moderate wind by having a friend put the kite in a fade position by hand. Learn to make the fade rise, fall, and slide sideways by gently pulling on one line or both. Notice that the nose is always oscillating between moving up and moving down. Look at how the kite reacts differently to line tension when the nose is on the upswing than when it's swinging downward. Now practice getting into a fade from the ground, with wind just light enough that the kite will sit belly down, nose away. Sweep both hands back till the nose swings under into a fade. Add a little tension as the nose is on the upswing to raise the kite off the ground. Hold the fade as long as possible. Now practice getting into the fade from a flare. Fly downward near the edge of the window and cock your body with your arms way back, ready to step forward. Throw slack at the kite to flare just till the spine is horizontal, then wait. Don't let the nose flare above the tail. Finally, try the fade from an axle. Do a smooth, flat, slow axle, and when the nose is pointed away with the spine about horizontal, pull both hands to swing under into a fade. Now that you can get into a fade, here's how to recover. The lateral roll. Practice swinging your wings back and forth while in a fade. Now let one wing back a bit while keeping the kite horizontal. Swing that wing forward while giving slack to the other, and the kite will flat spin about 180 degrees to a belly down, nose toward you position. Pull both lines to scoop air under the sail and return to flying position. The key to good looking flick flax is to do them smoothly with as few jerks as possible. Like so many tricks, you'll be amazed how little arm motion it takes if you pull and release at just the right time. While flying downward, throw enough slack at the kite to flare the nose just beyond horizontal, 
then swing the nose back towards you into a fade, then swing back down into a flare, and repeat. Flick flacks are easy when you're really good at the fade. If you can make the kite rise, sink, and slide sideways while in a fade, you'll have the sensitivity you need to flick flack with ease. The backspin is really just a fade that you get spinning around like a top, but it can be hard to learn because many kites either aren't designed for it or aren't adjusted properly to make it easy. In the prism line, the easiest kites to backspin are the Elixir, the E2, the Alien, and the Fanatic. The easiest way to learn the backspin is to get the kite into a cockeyed fade with the wings slightly off horizontal. Fly downwards at an angle toward the edge. Now flare the kite out and fade the same way you would to get into a normal fade, but do it from a diagonal path so that when the kite hits the fade, one wing is low. The fade won't stay cockeyed for long, so immediately give your pull to the low wing to start the backspin. If the kite goes all the way around once, you're all set to continue. Just keep tugging the same wing just before it comes around each time. If you're comfortable with basic tricks, you've probably already started to experiment by linking them together into combinations. Combinations are fun because every trick you do creates the opportunity to flow into another one. Just pay attention to the starting and ending positions for the trick to figure out what the kite wants to do next. A good example is the fruit roll-up, which is basically just a yo-yo, which you unroll directly into a fade. The key to this one is to make sure that at least one of your lines catches in front of the upper spreader fitting as the kite goes into the yo-yo. This is what lets you keep steering the kite even though it's wrapped up in the lines. If you can get both lines hooked on the fitting, try an extra yo-yo and unroll it into a multiple fruit roll-up or a backspin. Some people find it helpful to think of combinations as a string of transitions between just one of five different positions. The most common of these is flying position, where the kite is in its normal attitude at the end of your lines. The next position is the backflip, where the kite floats on its back with the nose away from you. The third position is the fade, where the kite floats on its back with the nose towards you. The fourth position is the pancake, with the kite on its belly and the nose away from you. And the fifth position is the front flip, with the kite on its belly, with the nose toward you. Most tricks start from one of these positions and end in another, so learn which tricks are possible from each position and you'll be able to put together a continuous string of trick combinations. A good example is the full Monty, which is a spin axle, into a front flip, into a back flip, into a lazy Susan, and back into flying position. Here it is again. The Jacob's Ladder starts with a fade, then a lateral roll, into a backflip, then a Lazy Susan halfway around, and back into a fade. None of the individual moves in these combinations are difficult. The challenge is to stay ahead of the kite and anticipate which move it will be ready to do next. Anytime you want to learn something new, just break it down into the smallest individual moves you can do and practice them separately until you're ready to put them together. We've taken this approach throughout this video and we hope it'll give you a lifetime of fun with your kites. From all of us at Prism Designs, smooth winds and fair skies.